Solutions. My name's Chris and we are on the road yet again, this time heading out to my old hometown of Newport, Oregon, because I have a client out there that has a unified video surveillance system that I built for them probably three to four years ago. And that system appears to have gone offline. Now we, I've had them reboot it. I've had them try a couple of troubleshooting steps remotely, but ultimately it is not working. So we have to go out and fix it. But instead of just fixing it, since Unify Video is, is deprecated, we are going to be replacing their Unify Video NVR with a Ubiquiti UNVR appliance that I have already pre-built for them and it is in the back here. Now, migrating from Unify Video over to Unify Protect, there are going to be some considerations that we have to think about in order to do that. When I show up, the first order of business is to try to get their old NVR back online. Reason being is if I can get the old NVR back online, I can get the old camera password, which I believe I have. I have it written down, but I, you know, it'd be best to verify that I have the correct password for their uh, camera access in case I have to factory reset all the cameras. I don't want to have to go climbing around on ladders and, you know, resetting everything with a paperclip. So we're going to try to get that camera password. Additionally, we're going to try to take a backup and see if we can actually just restore the configuration from Unify Video onto the UNVR. Now, is that possible? Supposedly, if you're on the latest version of Unify Video, you can take a backup and restore it into Unify Protect, but I've never actually tried that. And uh, again, whether it's gonna work or not, I'm iffy about it. So we'll give it a shot. And worst case scenario is I'll just have to factory reset the UNVR and then factory reset all of their cameras, again, hopefully remotely without having to go touch each camera physically and uh, get everything set up in the new system. So like many IT jobs, we're gonna be stepping into an unknown situation and evaluating what we see and then adapting to what we see in order to create an outcome that is most beneficial to the customer as well as efficient in terms of the time that I spend doing it. And really that's basically the job of an IT technician, right? Let's see if we can get something working. Let's see if we can get something fixed. Let's migrate something from point A to point B as painlessly as possible. But for now, I've got another hour and 15 minutes of driving ahead of me. So luckily it's a beautiful Oregon day so I can enjoy this nice drive. And we will pick this back up when I'm at the client site and I have started to investigate what's going on with their NVR. Okay, fingers crossed, but everything's actually been going okay so far. So, I got here, I found that the old NVR was just completely turned off, so I turned the power on, and I waited a couple minutes and nothing came up. So, I plugged in a keyboard and monitor, and there was nothing on the monitor, but what I did was I just hit F1, because sometimes, you know, something gets stuck at the BIOS, and you just need to press F1 to get past it. And that's exactly what happened. Now, the BIOS is set to automatically boot the machine in the event of a power loss and then when power is reconnected. So I'm not sure exactly why it didn't actually boot back into the machine, but pressing F1 uh, did get it to go through. So I was able to boot into the old NVR. I was able to verify the camera's password, which actually was what I thought it was or what I had written down in my notes. That was good. And then also I was able to take a backup. Now. I took the old computer out, which was, by the way, it was an old shuttle PC, which I love the shuttle case. That uh, it was always just such a cool case. Uh, so I took the shuttle Unify Video NVR out, and I put the Unify Protect UNVR in its place. I was then able to boot into the Unify UNVR and restore the backup from the Unify Video NVR, and it actually worked. Everything went perfectly, all the cameras were imported, and it even left the two cameras that I had set up separately uh, in Unify Protect. So all it did was it just added all of the Unify Video cameras. Then all of those cameras automatically updated, and all but one of them came back online, and I haven't checked the status of that one camera yet, but there's a lot of cameras, there's like 20 or so. So, you know, 19 out of 20 came back online is actually a pretty, pretty good. So now all of the cameras have been updated to the Unify Protect firmware, and we are now installing an additional G4 dome camera 
for a G3 dome that had actually failed. It's one of the other reasons that I was coming out to this location. They just had a camera that failed at one of their locations. So we're gonna swap that camera out next, and then we're gonna go back and figure out why the one camera didn't come online after I did the restore and it started updating. All right, job is complete, and I normally don't like saying, boy, that went flawlessly. Boy, that was just everything worked out so well because typically that's the way to jinx everything and then as soon as you say that everything breaks but honestly that went about as well as it could have so I got there I was able to restore the old NVR which means I was able to get the backup off the old NVR I put in the new NVR the backup restored fine onto the new NVR so I didn't have to go around and factory reset all the cameras or you know go and hit the the paperclip factory reset on all the cameras nothing like that they all imported except for one which got stuck during the update process for that camera i went to the switch and i cycled the poe from within unms and when it came back up it finished the update and came online no problem so that camera was perfect the backup and restore from unify video to unify protect worked as well as it possibly could for the other camera the one camera that they had that was broken and offline I went over to that camera, I took a look at it, it seemed like it was fine. I went up to the network switch where that camera is plugged in, which let me tell you, you talk about in ideal places or, or non-ideal places to, to work, they've got this network switch and where their internet comes in is in like this creepy back storage room uh, on the second floor of this building and it's really tough to work in there and it's definitely not an ideal condition. but. Everything does work, and I've had a 24-port uh, edge switch in there for easily five or six years now. So I went up to that edge switch, and I looked. It looked like there was power to that camera. There, It looked like the camera had activity, but it just was not showing up in Unify. So I unplugged it, and I plugged it into a different switch port, uh, and it came back up. And you say, why are you plugged it into a different switch port? Well... Before I came out here, I had them troubleshoot that camera, and I told them to unplug it and plug it back in, and they did that at the camera side, and it did not come back when they did that. So, you know, for whatever reason, when I plugged it into a different switch port on the actual switch side of the link, that time it worked, the camera came up, back up and came online, no problem. So I didn't even have to like drill a new camera into the wall or anything like that. So now they have a spare camera that they can use in case one of their other cameras goes out and they have a brand new Unify Protect system. The total time spent on site was about two and a half hours and that included uh, setting up and training three employees on the Unify Protect system, you know, getting them a ubiquity single sign-in login, setting them up with the browser application, setting them up with the smartphone application. So that was basically the last hour of the project was just helping them through that sort of stuff. And uh, other than that, yeah, it went about as smoothly as it could. And so, you know, fingers crossed, I didn't just jinx myself by saying that, but uh, I'm, I'm really happy with the way things turned out. All right, back in the home office, here is a better look at that shuttle case. And again, this is about four to five years old. Uh, and it's got some, it's really tough to see, but it's got some like sort of greasy, <laughs> greasy grime on it. This was upstairs from the kitchen at a restaurant location. So over the years, this stuff sort of builds up on the case so it can definitely use a really good cleaning. And in addition to that, it smells faintly of like fried fish. Which, which I think is pretty funny. I was smelling something in the office when I put this case in here, and I realized that it's just from uh, it's from the case itself, from being upstairs from a restaurant kitchen for the past four to five years. On the back of the case, there's a little bit of more, there's a little bit more grease. I can't really tell if that's like discoloration from heat or what, but there is a little bit of discoloration on the power supply fan. But inside the case, everything looks pretty good. So here we can see inside this case, I've got a four terabyte Western Digital Purple. That'll come in handy to reuse. And then I also have a one terabyte Western Digital Blue drive in here as well. But one thing that I noticed on this motherboard is there is a spot for an M.2 drive. So when I rebuild this thing, I might just throw a cheap sort of M.2 SSD in here and get rid of the one terabyte Western Digital Blue. Uh, and then I'll keep the four terabyte Western Digital Purple because what I'm thinking of doing with this is turning it into a uh, sort of Blue Iris uh, test NVR. I've been wanting to check out Blue Iris and uh, I think this would be the perfect computer to turn into a Blue Iris test machine. What do you guys think? Let me know down in the comments below. 
All right, last thing for this video, and please pardon the wiring back here. I usually like to keep things a little bit cleaner than this, but I've been doing a lot of testing with these uh, phones and this little PBX over here. When I did my Unify Protect video last week, I got a ton of questions about the UNVR. And I think there's a lot of confusion about how the UNVR works in conjunction with a full Unify infrastructure, especially when you have like a UDM Pro that has Protect or a Cloud Key Gen 2 Plus that has Protect as part of that network. So how does the UNVR interface with these other Protect devices? So let's go ahead and go over some of these questions that I received. Um, so here we go. Aaron uh, Schieferl, Schieferl says, any idea how many Unify Protect viewports you can run on your network? I have three different buildings all networked together that I would like the cameras displayed in. As far as I know, there's no limit to the number of viewports that you could have in Protect. Well, there's no theoretical limit. I'm sure there's an upper limit in terms of just resources being utilized out of whatever server you happen to be running the uh, Protect on. But that's basically it. There's no limit to the number of viewports that you can have, as far as I know. The YouTube India says, great video. The biggest problem for some users which have more than one location with UNVRs and one viewport to check all. Have you tried to view cameras from different Protect accounts on your viewport? Of course, sharing is provided. Um, so I think what he's asking is, can you have a single viewport device, which of course is the device that takes a PoE in and then outputs HDMI, and then in the viewport, you can select one of the pre-configured views in Unify Protect to display on a, a TV screen, for instance, like the one I have up here above my head. So the answer to that is no, one viewport per one instance of Protect. You cannot have one viewport that views cameras from multiple Protect systems because that viewport is configured with a view from a single Protect server. And a single Protect server cannot ha be displaying cameras from multiple Protect servers. Okay, ER ETR.TV says, great video, have you figured out a way to record cameras on two appliance concurrently? So on a UDM Pro and a UNVR, again, the answer there is no, it's gonna be a one-to-one -one ratio. One camera can record to one Protect device, whether that's the UNVR, UNVR Pro, UDM Pro, or Cloud Key Gen 2 Plus, right? Those are your four Protect devices as of the recording of this video. And if you have one camera, you have to adopt it to one of those devices, even if you have multiple of those devices in your network. All right, Jason Dinkle asks, can all of the cameras utilize smart detections? I have a few G3s and I'm considering upgrading from video to a Cloud Key Gen 2 Plus and Protect specifically for the smart detect features. The answer there again is no. The only cameras that can do smart detection are the G4 cameras, the generation four ubiquity cameras, which is like the G4 Pro, G4 Bullet, or G4 uh, Dome. Oh, also the doorbell can do it. So Amari Jackwatt, Jackwatt, well, that's a tough one. Sorry, guy. Uh, is there a procedure to migrate from an existing Unify video setup? Yes, there is. This is the exact procedure that I went through with this, uh, you know, earlier in this video. Basically, I had a Unify video NVR. It was on the latest and greatest version of Unify video. I mean, I had upgraded it at least a year ago, but they haven't come out with any new versions. So it was on the latest and greatest Unify NVR. Uh, Unify Video NVR. I took a backup of Unify Video and then I went over into Protect and I restored the backup into Protect. And it didn't bring across any users, it didn't bring across anything, it seems, except for the actual cameras that were connected to Unify Video. So all of those cameras were you know, populated into Unify Protect as a result of the restore and they all worked great. They came into Protect Immediately they all updated and I only had one camera that got stuck updating and I rebooted that camera or powered the, uh, cycled the power on that one camera and it came up fine as soon as it rebooted. All right, Michael says, can you put Protect on a separate VLAN like you recommend if I have a UDM Pro instead of a UNVR? And to the best of my knowledge, the answer is no. So if you have the UDM Pro, that is the core of your network, right? That's your firewall and router as well as Unify Protect and the other applications. There is no way that I'm aware of to say, I want Unify Protect to run in a specific 
VLAN uh, as part of the overall suite of applications on the UDM Pro. And then of course also have those cameras in that separate VLAN and whatnot. Now you could probably figure out a way to put all of the cameras in their own separate VLAN and then manually adopt them across, you know, using firewall rules to block uh, into the UDM Pro's Protect, but you're gonna lose the ability to, for Protect to sort of auto find those cameras and auto, um, you know, populate them for adoption in the interface. So it would be a little bit tricky to do that. I'm just speculating also, I don't know for 100% sure if that's possible. I'm just, you know, from what I know of networking, I believe you probably could do that. Uh, but that is one of the distinct advantages that having a separate UNVR provides versus having the UDM Pro is you have the flexibility to put that appliance along with all of the cameras into its own secure VLAN. Ireland's technology blog asks, can you connect the NVR to a UDM base and then just log into your cloud account and see both the UDM and NVR in the dashboard? I assume so, he asks. <laughs> so I don't believe so. I think if you have, so when you say to a UDM base, I'm not sure if he's talking about like the UDM Pro or if he's talking about that little R2D2 uh, UDM uh, dream machine. In either case, if you have a UNVR running Protect, that will not show up in your dream machine. Either the dream machine Pro, which has Protect on board, or that little UDM. It just, it just doesn't work that way. So the UDM Pro has its own Unify OS base operating system that runs Protect and it is localized to that particular appliance. And finally, Chris Robson asks, can you use this device as an extra drive bay for a Dream Machine Pro? If not, can users on Dream Machine Pro auto replicate from there or do both work a completely separate setup in the network? So I understand what he's asking. He's saying, if I have a Dream Machine Pro, can you supplement Protect on the Dream Machine Pro with the hard drives from the UNVR? And the answer is no. Again, these are completely separate instances of Protect. They do not interoperate in any way whatsoever. If you have the UDM Pro, but you need you know, a lot more cameras or you want the redundancy of the RAID volume of the UNVR, essentially what you need to do is just uninstall Protect from the UDM Pro and only use the UNVR in that case. There's also no replication of users between the UDM Pro, you know, the Unify OS operating system running on the Unify Pro, uh, the UDM Pro versus the Unify OS operating system running on the UNVR. They don't share users in any way whatsoever. There's no like, you know, LDAP or Active Directory type of thing working behind the scenes so that they can, you know, have a centralized uh, repository of users. That's just not, uh, just not possible. All right, so that's gonna do it for this video. It wasn't very exciting. You know, sometimes these videos are more exciting if I can actually troubleshoot something that's not working, but things went pretty smoothly. So I'm gonna head back home and uh, get some more work done for the day. And uh, yeah, get back a couple hours earlier than I thought I was gonna get back. So that's always a bonus. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you give me a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, please click subscribe. My name's Chris with Crosstalk Solutions and thank you so much for watching.